Welcome to Relocating to Disney. Here we are outside at the pool. You can probably hear the Disney fireworks going off behind me. And there's some bird off to the right here that's having a heck of a night tonight. As we're thinking about the things that have happened over the past year, uh, we, we bought this house 13 months ago, but we didn't move into it right away. We didn't move into it until uh, July. So we really haven't been in Florida 13 months. We've owned this house for 13 months. And so the one year anniversary is still yet to come up here in July. And we're thinking back at all the work that we did to get here. And it is an incredible amount of work. I don't know how we did it. I mean, we, we would have our jobs all day and then we would be purging and selling and getting rid of stuff and packing uh, in, all night long and into the weekends, and ah, what a whirlwind it really was. But we had a chance uh, to think about everything that we went through. And as my wife and I were, were thinking about this, there were some things that came up that we thought, you know, it, it would have been nice to have done it a little bit differently. We had been purging our house for more than a year. And like I said, we weren't resting. This was, you know, every spare moment purging and we still didn't get it done. We still ended up bringing some stuff here to Florida to purge. Not a lot, but we did end up bringing some, some things here that we just didn't get around to finishing. Now, as we were purging, we were um, going through the items, deciding what we wanted to sell and what we wanted to give away. Um, we donated quite a lot of things, van loads and van loads. I can't remember how many, man, somewhere between 10 and 15 full van loads that we donated to our church for their uh, annual sale. And one of the things that we didn't do because we were just so busy and just rushing to get this done is we never collected receipts for the things we donated. Now... We, at the time, we didn't think it was a big deal, and it wasn't a big deal until it came time to do our taxes this year, and we didn't have any receipts for all the things that we had donated. Well, that would have been uh, nice, and looking back at it, it uh, would have been uh, pretty cool if we had the time to you know, document everything that we were donating and get a receipt for it. Something else, it was kind of surprising how the things in our house that we thought were valuable ended up not being valuable at all. Things that we thought we could sell or give away, uh, people just simply d didn't want. Now, some items that we had that we didn't really think much of were pretty valuable. Um, we did end up selling quite a bit. I think um, I'd have to go back and look at those videos. I think through Facebook Marketplace, we probably sold... $12,000 worth of our stuff, um, somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe more. Um, but you know, that was a lot of work selling those items. You know, you had to, uh, first find it, decide you wanted to sell it, clean it up, take pictures, get it posted, and then be available through that whole process of the selling of the items. A lot of, a lot of work went into that. We spent a lot of time selling little things toys and just stuff that was in drawers. And we didn't sell a lot of our big items, like our dressers and our furniture. And that's because we needed those items to stage the house so it could sell. A house with furniture looks more appealing than a completely empty house. We had to have this furniture uh, in the house so we couldn't really sell it. Now, yeah, we could have sold it and then rented furniture. We didn't have the money for that. So what we decided to do was just hold on to the furniture and sell it later in the process. And we thought, hey, we got some nice furniture. People are going to line up to buy this stuff from us. And it got right down, you know, the house sold. We had to get rid of the furniture. And people weren't lining up to buy our furniture. In fact... We even got to the point where we tried giving away a lot of our furniture and people just simply didn't want it. Their houses were already filled with furniture. They didn't want more furniture. Now, a lot of the items 
that we had. Like I said, we would decide to sell it, donate it, or give it away. A lot of the giveaway items just went out into the front yard with a free sign on it. And sure enough, somebody would drive by and see it, and they would they would end up taking it, almost everything. And you could put just about anything out in the front yard, and somebody would drive by and take it. But when it came to the big furniture items, that takes, you know, a special kind of customer to drive by and say, um, I want to take that big piece of furniture and try fitting it into my sedan or putting it in the back of my minivan, right? You really need uh, somebody to come by who has a truck who wants to put in that extra effort of uh, getting it loaded and taking it. So we were really saddened to think that some of this furniture that we had held on for uh, decades and was very important to us that we couldn't sell it. And we put it out in the front yard and people weren't taking it. And some of this furniture, eventually it got rained on, it got ruined, and the trash guy ended up having to take it. Very, very sad situation there. You know what, looking back at it, was it the right decision to use that furniture to stage the house? Uh, it's tough. That's that's really a tough call. I would have very much rather have been able to sell those big items because I thought they were worth a lot of money. And uh, rather than see, in, in many cases, that furniture just, just go to waste, to go, go to the trash. You know, something else that we misjudged was the value of collectibles. I had from... Ever since I was a teenager, I had comic books, I had baseball cards, we had knickknack collections, we had just all kinds of collections that we had acquired over the years. And, uh, for example, comic books, some of these were golden age comic books. And I was uh, at the point where I couldn't bring them to Florida, I had to sell them. What I thought these were worth was way wrong. I couldn't believe it. I, I remember baseball cards, it got to the point where I was just about giving them away. It was like, uh, oh, you, you know, you bought 12 packs, here's another 12 just for stopping out and <laughs> buying these. Thank you very much for helping me, helping me out. It, you know, you would buy one thing and I'd throw in uh, a couple dozen packs of baseball cards because I could not get them to sell and when I did sell them, nobody was paying anywhere near what I thought they were worth. And, and I believe me, I completely understand the collector's market. I completely understand people buy low, sell high. I completely understand they're not going to pay you what they're worth because they have to turn around and make money on it. I get all of that. Even with that understanding, I struggled to get rid of a lot of my stuff. Almost to the point, like I said of giving away a lot of these collections. Okay, next up is, uh, if you've watched this blog for a while, you know I talk about purging too much. If you pay attention to a lot of the moving forums, you'll find people that say, hey, just sell it all and come down here, you know, with just your car, <laughs> whatever you can fit in your car. And that is the, in my opinion, the worst advice that can possibly be given. And I suspect the people giving that advice are coming from a city where they have maybe a one bedroom apartment and they don't have much furniture to begin with and they're like, hey, just get rid of it all. Okay, if, if you've got a substantial house, two, 3,000 square feet, whatever, and you're moving into a substantial house, you know, two, 3,000 square feet, whatever, you're going to have a lot of furniture and need a lot of furniture. If you think uh, you're gonna come down to Florida and buy all brand new furniture, <laughs> you better have a big checking account. Okay, it's going to be expensive. And if you think you're just going to go out to all the thrift shops and fill your house with uh, thrift furniture, you're going to have a messy looking mixed up house of mismatched furniture. And it's going to take you a long time to find the pieces you like. My recommendation is always be careful what you purge. You can always bring it to Florida and then purge it. If you've got room on the truck, you know, bring it along. Now, in our case, we got rid of some things and then afterwards, we kind of regretted some of it 
And we actually had to go out and buy some of the things that we had gotten rid of. Uh, for example, uh, we got rid of some uh, fake plants and then we got here and it's like, hey, those fake plants would look uh, really nice in this area. What did we do with them? Oh, we got rid of the fake plants. Darn. And then holidays came along. Where's our holiday decorations? We got rid of a lot of our holiday decorations. And now we want to decorate our house and we don't have any holiday decorations. I remember I had totes and totes full of brand new Christmas lights. And what I would do is after Christmas, these lights would go on sale. So I'd go buy them pennies on the dollar. So I had a lot of brand new Christmas lights. And I didn't think it made sense to move all those Christmas lights to Florida. I got rid of them all. And then Christmas came along and guess what? I didn't have any Christmas lights. So rather than you know using all these lights that I bought pennies on the dollar, I now had to go to the store and pay the Christmas season prices for lights. That was a huge mistake. And it wasn't just lights, it's just any decoration for any holiday. Um, we're having to go out and rebuy uh, the decorations that we had gotten rid of. So that that was a bit of a, of a regret. And, you know, there's some other regrets as well. I'll tell you about uh, one of the regrets, and this just really uh, pains me to, to even talk about it, is more than 20 years ago, we had bought um, a really expensive bunk bed set for our kids. And all of our kids used this set at one point or the other. It started with my daughter and went through all my sons. And uh, the, the bunk bed could be disassembled. So, uh, you know, maybe a kid would use one of the beds and another kid would use the, the first bed or maybe one kid would have both of them. You know, it was very modular and we could do a lot with it. But this was high quality furniture and we paid a lot of money for it. 20 plus years ago, we didn't have a lot of money. And so this was a big sacrifice for us. And we love this furniture. We took really good care of it because uh, we knew the value of that furniture and how important it was to us and our family. Now we used the, those beds to help stage the house. So at the end, uh, after the house was sold, now we were in a position to sell those bunk beds. And I advertised them and there was zero interest. And it got to move day and those beds were still in my garage and they were not selling. I dropped the price, I dropped the price. I mean, I got it down to just about nothing. Uh, we tried giving it to uh, friends. We tried to uh, give it to other people. Uh, people just didn't need these bunk beds. If they needed a bunk bed, they had a bunk bed, right? They didn't need it, even, even though this was high quality wood and uh, a very nice set, we couldn't do anything with it. It got to the point where we were moving and it was still in the garage and we um, couldn't do anything. So we, our friends said, well, just leave it there. And, and uh, you know, if somebody comes by and they're interested in it, we'll, we'll help them out with it. Shortly after we moved, there was a big rainstorm, some water, uh, got in under the door and hit those bunk beds and uh, the wood of course soaked up all that rainwater. So here were uh, these bunk beds that we had treasured for so long, had taken care of for so long and that, and that we thought were very valuable and they got ruined just that fast. So what does that tell you? You really have to think about what it is that you value uh, you know, you should value family and friends and an opportunity to go to Florida and not value things. And don't assume that the things are uh, worth money or that anybody wants your crap because they have enough of their own crap. They don't want your crap too. So that brings me to the last uh, part of our purging and selling and race to leave New York. And this is my uh, most important advice to you. And it's something that I wish we could have done more of. I mean, right at the end, we were rushing so quickly to get everything packed and purged and out of there. What you wanna do is make sure you set aside ample time to spend with your family and your friends and doing uh, things with your family for the last time, right? Before you, before you leave and head out to Florida because 
who knows when you're going to return? Who knows when you're going to see these people again, if ever again? So you want to make sure you set aside lots of time. In our case, we couldn't set aside enough time. Uh, we did get to see everybody and do some things, but it really wasn't enough time. When you're in that situation, you want to be spending time with your family and your friends, not shoveling your crap, okay? Not taking junk that's going to end up in the curb and go to the trash anyways. Not stuff that you're going to sell for a dime and a quarter. You don't want to waste your time with that. You want to spend it with your family and your friends. And it was just, we had so much stuff. We had so much packing to do. We were so rushed and raced that we have some regret that we um, uh, spent too much time on that stuff and not enough time on the stuff that, that really matters. All right, so that's my recommendation to you is you're planning, you're purging, and you're selling and getting ready to pack and move. Save some time at the end for the things that are really important. All right, that's it for tonight. Thank you for watching today's video.